Hey, I'm Richard Matthews. I run a wealth management firm in downtown Greenville in Fountain Inn, South Carolina. I've shot tons of videos on market trends, planning strategies, and financial education, and honestly, at this point, I've just talked too much. I'm bored of the sales pitches I hear in financial media, so now I'm interested in what other local financial experts are thinking about in the upstate South Carolina economy and markets on the No Nonsense Investor. All right, we're back Lake Kachina and Fountain Inn. Again, if you have not been here, uh, Mark and his staff work really hard, take really good care of you. Awesome Italian food, uh, awesome drinks. You'll catch me here a couple of nights a week. But uh, today we're with Kyle McMacken. And uh, Kyle, we're gonna, we're gonna jo- jump into our normal progression of questions uh, with the, the, the little uh, challenge question at the end. So if you're ready, I know who you are, but tell these people who you are. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Uh... So I'm Kyle McMacken. I own Main Street Insurance, and I've been doing the, the, the insurance. I've been in the insurance industry for 21 years now, and I started as a, a captive agent in the life and annuity business. And did that for 10 years, and then realized that uh, independent was the way to go, so you could offer more products to more people, and that's what we've done. We've slowly added a line of insurance, uh, you know, along the years, and now we do everything. Everything you can think of insurance, we do it. Awesome, cool. So you're in like kind of an independent, non-captive business model. What do you like best about that? Because you can find the product that fits the person. Whereas in the captive world, it was either what you had to offer or that was it. You okay. know, if it wasn't a good fit, then you either put a client in a, in a bad product or, or you couldn't offer them what, what they needed. So now we can, we'll find it. It takes time, but we find it. Okay, awesome. So when you talk to a client, the fact that you can go out and, and find whatever is gonna suit the, the problem and fix the problem, you know, what is it that they like most about your approach as an insurance person? No matter what their need is, we can we can meet it in most cases. So we offer every line of insurance, Medicare, healthcare, life insurance, home and auto, commercial insurance. So we can, we, we don't try to have a million clients. We don't strive to mass market and, and you know, just load it down with home and auto. We find people who love us, we love them, and we just grow the roots within the family and, and offer everything. People really like that they can go to one place and, and get everything they need. Awesome, and you're on Main Street, so you get yeah. foot traffic, and, and that's a pretty cool deal. It but uh, but yeah. it's also selective, like you're, you're very specific with, with how you help clients, so that's cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump into kind of the, the meat and potatoes, if you will, of our discussion here. Um, you know, we're starting to see a lot of people move away from work and, and consider what retirement might be or, or jumping into a new line of work or starting their own gig on the side. Um, and if, if they're doing something like the word retirement, which doesn't really mean much anymore, um, one of the big concerns has been healthcare, right? Mm-hmm. So, so what is it that you're seeing that you think people should be uh, talking about more? That's it. And when we talk about retirement, and I'm sure when you talk to your clients about that, it, the biggest hurdle is the, the rising cost of health care. So it, it delays retirement sometimes, or, but there's ways that we can do to bridge that to, to you hit 65 and, and go on Medicare where hopefully it'll cut the cost back. Uh, you know, but the, the earlier we start planning, the better. But we've been able to bridge with uh, the ACA plans, Affordable Care Act plans, and, and maximize that tax credit. People who've done well, we can, they have enough saved up to where we can possibly delay social security because you do have to count that, um, possibly delay a pension or minimize the taxable income to allow them to get for affordable health care and, and retire at 62, 63 and not have to wait to 65. Okay, so, so when you're saying bridge, you're talking about bridging until Medicare, right? Yeah. So, so typically we would look at their group benefits, right? Hopefully the retiree can stay on a group plan before Medicare. Um, are, are you seeing that spouses are, con- are covered in that? or It it's all depends on the, the company they work for. They all make their own rules. But in most cases, it, it's just unaffordable okay. or it's just outrageously priced. You know, very seldom, uh, I, I maybe have 10 clients that are still on their retiree program. Everybody's either been forced to jump ship or, or forced to financially. So, yeah, we're able to bridge that gap so people can determine when they want to retire and not work for benefits. You know, you always hear a lot of people tell me, well, as soon as I turn 65, I'm retiring just so I can go on Medicare. And that doesn't have to be the case now. They can choose when they want to retire. Awesome, and that's the benefit of the Affordable Care Act. I know a lot of of talking heads like to say, oh, Obamacare is expensive and we can't keep our doctors or whatever, but it actually 
did kind of give us a tool to be able to retire earlier than just Medicare age, right? Yeah. And so when you're saying the Affordable Care Act, there are ways to do that in taxation. Um, what are some of those strategies? We plan whether we take withdrawals from retirement plans to last them until age 65. Um, maybe cut back on some of the expenses, at least for one or two years, however long it takes to get to that 65. We know there's an end goal and it's age 65, so whatever it takes to get to that. So in your case, like we talked about, delay in Social Security. You know, hold off on taking those, if you're able to maximize your savings or at least spend down some of your already taxable income that's already been taxed. So it's, we can really get uh, creative. And, and have a plan that it's worked. I mean, I think we're going in our ninth year of the Affordable Care Act, so you know that's uh, it's worked all these years, and, and we're just taking advantage of uh, what, what they've given us to work with. And I think um, we've worked together on a case before where a, a client actually was able to continue contributing to an IRA to get their adjusted gross income below the threshold to maximize the tax credit to keep an affordable care plan before they got on Medicare. Oh, man, it works so good when you have a CPA that you work with and a, a wealth manager, a, a money manager, because we can really get creative and take money from different avenues, from different buckets to, to, to make this work. Yeah, so it's definitely um, ways to, even if we exceed what we planned on taking out, that IRA contribution comes in handy at, at the very end to, to go below that threshold. Awesome. and so. If we're talking about how we're going to live on things that don't get taxed, right, as income, I think that's the main focus. Um, you know, sometimes clients end up having a non-qualified account or a joint brokerage account, and you know, there may be some capital gains and capital losses, and um, you know, freeing up cash flow. I think that that's a case where you can actually, um, you know, free up some cash that you can turn into an income source and, and avoid paying income tax and capital gains tax. Um, to make sure you're still getting your credit, right? Because the tax credit is the key, uh, from what I remember in all of this. What about um, people who have pre-existing conditions or exclusions? What does that look like? Yeah, that's never an issue. If, if there are health questions on an application, that's probably a plan that I wouldn't advise anyway. But uh, all the, the Affordable Care Act plans, there's no pre-existing condition clause or exclusions affiliated with it. And, you know, that's probably why healthcare has gotten to where it is today because nine years of not answering health questions has really caught up with us. You, you've seen deductibles increase, you've seen prices increase, and that's the reason why. The preventative list has grown tremendously, so they really want you to stay on top of that if at all possible because it's no cost to you to have those done. It's paid 100%, but it has driven the cost up and, and the deductibles. Interesting. Well, you, you kind of teed right into the next one. This. Inflation Reduction Act. You talked about costs going up and everything, but um, if we're going to reduce inflation, one of the big pieces of this is they're trying to go after prescription drug costs, which uh, you know tend to escalate over time and um, sometimes more than they honestly should. So, with this in, uh, Inflation Reduction Act that's now going through the House to uh, to be finalized and put into law, um, what is it that you're seeing as far as um, the prescription? Costs and, and what are they doing with this in the healthcare world? It's you know we could talk about this for hours just because of uh, the cost it is to our retirees. I've seen it for you know, ten years now, where a lot of these drugs, especially the brand name drugs, are just it's breaking people. And you know what they're going to do? They're they're going to have the ability. They're going to empower uh, Medicare to negotiate the, the rates of some of the higher cost drugs. And the only downside, it doesn't take effect until 2026. So I don't know, it's a lot of hype right now that, that we're gonna have to sit on for a while. But they're gonna take the, the 10 most expensive drugs in 2023 and negotiate the prices of those. But I, I personally like to see them take the 10 highest cost drugs, most prescribed drugs, ah. and then lower the cost of those. That way it affects millions of people. I mean, we have one, Xarelto, use that for example, it's a blood thinner works very well there's no generic and it's been out for quite some time huh. and it, it, we don't know why it just they've mastered that particular drug and and people are, are being charged for it tremendously and i've got i know maybe 50 clients on that drug so you think about the millions of people that would affect if they lowered the cost of that one not just lowering the cost of the 10 most expensive because then i mean where, where do you stop? Yeah, I think it's kind of cherry picked. 10 seems like not enough, right? Because yeah. I, I, I just remember 
clients, there's, there's usually the same three or four that almost everybody's on right, exactly. once they reach age 70. So, uh, yeah, I mean, costs are, are taken off and this isn't really affecting until 2026. So maybe that'll give them time to figure it out by then, <laughs> you know, figure out something. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, last, last thing, this is the challenge question. So, um, yeah, this is, this is gonna be interesting to see how you answer it. What do you think about variable annuities. Variable annuities. You know Richard, the way I look at investing is to maximize the return and minimize the fees. I personally feel like you there are a lot more investments out there and, and I'm sure that that's your world to know that a lot there's a lot more investments out there that have fewer fees. Sure. So I'm sure they have their place. I just haven't found it yet. So I'm not affiliated with it and, 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 and don't endorse it. Okay. So annuities in general, though, I've, I've always mm -hmm. considered those as basically intermediate term bonds with a different liquidity risk, right? Instead of interest rate risk, cutting the value if you're not to maturity yet, um, you just pay a static surrender fee, right? Or whatever that is. You, I think you're talking about the, the return fees in, in terms of sub accounts or mortality and expense and so forth. but. Annuities in general, it, those aren't necessarily bad, are they? They aren't, and, and I'm a big believer in fixed annuities, whether it's fixed indexed, and it's just uh, the protection. I don't think everything should be in there, I think, but everybody should have a piece that is protection, you know, as an alternative to bonds. And it's, uh, you know, a lot of it, they're offering really good interest rates as opposed to any other alternative, a CD or any type of money market. So it is a good alternative. Uh, I believe in it just for the income structure that you can, you know, start with sure. those. And then, you know, any other long-term care benefit, we can tie into that. And that's another thing I think a lot of people need to be talking about that aren't. That okay. need for long-term care. And that's a whole different discussion. That's but, good. You know, that's something that nobody talks about unless they've had a family member that's been admitted to a nursing home. But get, getting away from the, the topic, but I, I am a believer in that and, and how it can generate guaranteed income for the rest of life. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big believer when we have uh, downturns in the market, people are taking distributions, it's yeah. nice to take from something that hasn't lost anything. Yeah, so right. uh, uh, people in wealth management, we should acknowledge the value of uh, annuities and it's just a shift from the, um, uh, the liquidity risk uh, that we faced in interest rate risk bonds. So um, anyway, I think that's all we got actually for uh, a no-nonsense investor. And I wanna thank Kyle for spending time coming in here. Um, you know, our goal here is to bring useful information that matters to the people uh, of the upstate in South Carolina uh, that they can use right now. And uh, as far as bridge plans are concerned and how to carry a, a health insurance conversation before Medicare, post-retirement or separation of service is, is really important. So, you know, we, we like to look at expert advice. We like to look at people who talk about the uh, the actual problems and solutions rather than the sales pitches. So um, yeah, hopefully you've, you've enjoyed this. Come back next time and uh, we'll see you then.